Welcome. I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School uh, with our guest, Ta Chirapadanakun, who's with the uh, Facebook Data Science Group. Ta, Facebook is one of the most data-driven companies in the world and has probably one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, data sets in the right. world. Um, in your job as a data scientist, how does, how does being a data scientist help Facebook to become, uh, kind of make the world more open and connected? Right, so for us as a data scientist, uh, most of the job that we do is to actually try to help company understand how people, how our users use our platform, uh, and that comes into many types of analysis that we could do. We can analyze their behavior on the site, what do they click on, what do they like, or sometimes we analyze the data or the information that they post, do they post a lot of photos, and we can learn a lot of things, like different users from different countries that have different culture in the way they use Facebook as a platform. So when you, when you start an inquiry, do you always know what the purpose of your inquiry is? No, exactly. Uh, that's actually the biggest thing. So a lot of data scientists, one thing that people always say is that data scientists should be creative because we first need to write the, we need to ask the right question. So that's the first step. And to ask that, to test our hypothesis quickly, we just take some sample of the data and doing exploratory analysis just to understand the data set that we have and quickly validate whether the hypothesis that we have is somewhat correct or not before we dig into the full data set. That would require a lot more computational resource. Yeah, so, I mean, you have so much data. I mean, how, is, how do you get through all that data in a reasonable amount of time? I mean, I imagine it must take, take a really long time to right. ask, answer very specific questions. So Facebook, as a technology uh, company, we built a lot of technologies in-house. A lot of them has been open source, and we have a lot of paper published in the academic community. And there are a lot of tools, uh, like Presto, that would allow us to carry all those data very quickly. And there's a tool called Hive that would allow you to dig into those terabyte, petabyte of data to get to the conclusion that you want. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's impressive about Facebook is that all these tools that you've developed, or a lot of these tools you've developed, you, you make them open source. Right. I mean, it's, it, it sounds crazy, right? Why, why would a company take this technology and, and just, that it spent so much time and effort and energy developing and then just open it up to, right. to the development community? Because I think at the end of the day, we realize that we actually gain more than we have to lose. Basically, once we open source this, then we have uh, all these independent developers who really want to use our stuff as well. They would build inter uh, the same interface for other clients or other languages and make our, uh, our tool more complete. And sometimes we bring it back in-house and we can really benefit from that too. So I think one of the projects you, you probably had the most fun with was the uh, World Cup project. Right. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you did there? Yeah, so during the World Cup, as you know, it's one of the events that people around the world share this uh, particular moment. It's not like a country-specific thing. So it's a global event, and people are interested in that. And we want to make sure they have a great experience on Facebook. And we try to release a lot of insights that people find exciting, so we have a fandom map that basically show which players are popular in which countries and let them compare and contrast and see why some players are popular in one place and not the other. We also have, uh, we also analyze the status updates that we did that people show that they support for a certain team. We actually look into how those support change over time. Let's see if your country already lost in the tournament, which country would you switch to support? Would you go for your rival or would you support your other country in your neighborhood, let's mm -hmm. say? Yep, so we look into some of those, yep. And I think a big part of your job is making the information accessible to decision makers and to consumers by through creative visualizations. Right, so a lot of time, actually most of the time, once you find an insight or you have a specific thing that you want to communicate, we just put together those plot, write up a note, send a report to the certain team so that the team can take all those insights and improve the product. Fantastic. Well, Ta, thank you very much for coming in today. Thanks for having me.